The Werewolf of Fever Swamp by R. L. Stein. We moved to Florida during Christmas vacation. A week later I heard the frightening hounds in the swamp for the first time. Night after night, the howls made me sit up in bed. I would hold my breath and wrap my arms around myself to keep from shivering. I would stare out my bedroom window at the chalk-colored moon and I would listen. What kind of creature makes such a cry? I would ask myself. And how close was it? Why does it sound as if it's right outside my window? The wails rose and fell like police car sirens. They weren't sad or mournful. They were menacing. Angry. They sounded like a warning. Stay out of the swamp. You don't belong here. When my family first vi moved to Florida, to our new home at the edge of the swamp, I couldn't wait to explore. I stood in the backyard with the binoculars my dad had given me for my 12th birthday, and gazed out towards the swamp. Trees with slender white trunks tilted over each other, their flat broad leaving a pe leaves appeared to form a roof covering the, the swamp's floor in blue shadow. Behind me the deer paced uneasy in their wire mesh pen. I would hear them pawing the soft sandy ground, rubbing their antlers against the walls of their pen. Lowering my binoculars, I turned to look at them. They, the deer, were the reason we had moved to Florida. You see, my dad, Michael F. Tucker, is a scientist. He worked for the University of Vermont in Burrington, which, believe me, is a long way from a, the Florida swamps. Dad got these six deers from the same, some country in South America. They're called swamp deer. They're not like regular deer, I mean, they don't look like Bambi. For one thing, their fur is very red, not brown. And their hooves were are really big and kind of webbed for walking on wet swampy ground. Argus. Dad wanted to see if these South American swamp deer can survive in Florida. He planned to put little radio transmitters on them and set them free in the swamp. Then he'd study how they get along. When he told me, told us back in Burlington, that we were moving to Florida because of the deer. We all totally freaked. We didn't want to move. My sister Emily cried for days. She's 16. And she didn't want to miss her senior year in high school. I didn't want to leave my friends either. But Dad quickly got Mom on the side. Mom is a scientist too. She and Dad worked together on a lot of projects, too. She and Dad, so of course, she agreed with him. And the two of them tried to persuade Emily and me that this was a chance of a lifetime. That it was going to be a real exciting an adventure we'd never forget. So... Here we were, living in a little white house in a neighborhood of four or five 
other little white houses. We had six weird looking deer penned up behind the house. The hot floor of the sun was beaming down and an endless swamp stretching beyond all flat grassy backyard. I turned away from the deer and raised the binoculars to my face. Oh, I cried out as two dark black, as two dark eyes seemed to be staring back at me. I pulled the binoculars away and squinted towards the warmth, and in the distance, I saw a large white bird on two long spindly legs. It's a crane, Emily said. I hadn't realized Emily had stepped up beside me. She was wearing a sleeveless white t-shirt and short red denim shawl. My sister is tall and thin and very blonde. She looked a lot like a crane. The bird turned and began high-stepping towards the swamp. Let's follow it, I said. Emily made her pouting face an expression we had all seen a lot of since moving down here. No way. It's too hot. Aw, oh, come on. I tugged her skinny arm. Let's do some exploring. Check out the swamp. She shook her head, her white, blown ponytail swinging behind her. I really don't want to, Grady. She adjusted her sunglasses on her nose. I'm kind of waiting for the mail. Since we're too far, from, since we're so far from the nearest post office, we only get mail two times a week. Emily had been spending most of her time waiting for the mail. Waiting for a love letter from Martin? I asked with a grin. She hated when I teased her about Martin, her boyfriend back in Burlington. So I teased her as, as often as I could. Maybe, she said. She reached out with both hands and messed with my hair. She knows I hate it when she messes with my hair. Please, I pleaded. Come on, Emma. Emily. Just a short walk, very short. Emily. Take a short walk with Grady. Dad's voice broke in. He turned to see. We turned to see him. Inside the deer pen. He had a clipboard in one hand. It was going from deer to deer, taking notes. Go ahead, he urged my sister. You're not doing anything else. But dad, Emily could whine with the best of them when she wanted. Go ahead, Erm, Em, dad insisted. It's, it'll be an, it'll be interesting. More interesting than standing around in the heat arguing with him. Emily pushed her sunglasses up. They kept slipping off her nose. Well, great, I cried. I was really excited. I'd never been in a real swamp before. Let's go. I grabbed my sister's hand and pulled her. Huh? And pulled her. Emily reacted, reluctantly followed a fretful expression on her face. I have a bad feeling about this, she muttered. My shadow slanted behind me. I hurried towards a low, tilting tree. Emily, what could go wrong? I asked. Hey, yo guys, this is your pal, the Wolf Titan Readings, coming in and telling you that I've started this reading of The Werewolf of Fever Swamp. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you guys want to support me and help me keep on doing some creepy tales for you guys, why not go on Amazon and check out my book, 
laments of a storyteller. I wouldn't mind having you guys read a little bit of what I've got. And besides, I'm planning to do a big thing for each book sold. At least a dollar from each book sold will either go to the Red Cross or St. Jude's. I hope you guys enjoyed the reading. And remember, the werewolves are always close.